you, everyone. I, I got a sense from the, uh, the very opening of this uh, meetup that there was a big number of uh, dev people in the room. Uh, about half of the team were ops kind of people. Um, my name's Mike Jones. I'm a, a DevOps engineer. Actually, this is uh, 20 years experience in software testing. And I've learned that uh, there's a number of problems and challenges in software testing with environments and uh, configuration management that led me to, uh, to actually get excited about DevOps. I now actually have a role in, in DevOps, but this is uh, day number two for me. And I'm, I am rounding up. So um, if something doesn't work out quite well, I'd appreciate all of you kind of helping me out. So a little bit about the presentation. I'm going to talk about uh, the third way to success. Can I just get a show of hands? Who's read the Phoenix Project? Hands up, everyone raise your hand. That looks like about a third of the room. Hands up, who, who of you have read or have started to read the second book, DevOps Handbook? Well, excellent, excellent, because it only came out it only came out a few weeks ago. Excellent, thank you. There are so few hands. Now, the, the introduction to that book mentions a third book, The Toyota Way. Can I see hands up? Who's read the title? Excellent, wonderful, fantastic. I'm looking for some assistance. Could you, could you stand up at the, at the end? Could you stand up for me? Okay, all right, what, stand up. Excellent, could you come forward? Could you help? Could you help me out? Could you read the card sure. for me? Excellent, thank you. What's your name? My name's Alex. Alex, wonderful, thank you. So I'm looking... Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so we, have, we have not rehearsed this, but it's fantastic because you've already read the book, you're already familiar with, uh, with uh, the content. Hopefully. Hopefully you, you, you're ready. Read um, could you please read out the, the title? <clears throat> title at the top of that piece of paper. Continuous Improvement Carter. Great, thank you. Now, what I'd like to do is actually give you now a demo because um, that, that's the end of the that's, that's slides. I'd like to give you a practical demo. Stay here. I'm going to need your help. Um, can I get two other volunteers? You, to, you don't need to say anything, um, but I would like you to hold up this, this piece of paper. So, one, if you can hold it up. I know, I know you're not going to be able to read this, but you just need to uh, observe the interaction that I have Adam? Alex. Alex, sorry, Alex. Um, and listen to our interaction. I'd like you to read out the first number one. Step number one, understand the direction or challenge. Thank you. Number two. Number two, grasp the current condition. Okay, number three. Number three, establish the next target condition. Thank you. Yep, number four. Finally, experiment towards the target condition. Okay, thank you. Now, we're going to uh, do a coaching session. I would like you to act as my coach and coach me on the, uh, the improvement carter. I've got the five questions, now you know this. You've, you've read the book. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> part, part of this improvement, uh, improvement process goes hand in hand with a coaching carter. And that's someone acting as the leader, usually not necessarily the manager, it could be a peer, but a leader helping to coach someone in this process of continuous learning, continuous improvement. Now it comes with a... Uh, uh, are five questions, which technically has seven questions on one side and four on the other. But don't ask, don't ask me that. That's, that's just the format for the questions. Please, if you could come over to the board and we'll walk through um, the, the questions. Thank you. So could you read out the first question? Okay, so first of all, what is the target condition? Well, as you know, uh, we wanted to create a culture of continuous learning. And so our target condition was to uh, apply this Toyota Carter improvement uh, to show consistent progress on retro action items every sprint for three consecutive sprints. Yeah. So what is the actual condition now? Um, we've had three sprints and so far we've not completed any of our retro actions. I see. Could you tell me what obstacles you think are preventing you from reaching your target condition? Uh, well, the first one we thought was that we don't know this this process, so that was our that was our first obstacle. Uh, but we've been doing this now for about three sprints, so I think we've learned kind of the, the process now. Uh, so I've crossed that one off. Um, I think we we, need to, we still have too many retroactions. Um, we were doing twelve retroactions. I think um, that's too many. 
so we still have this obstacle. We're trying to do too many things at once. 12, 12 is too many. 12 is definitely too many. You'd okay. want to pare that down first. So which of these many retroactive actions are you addressing right now? Um, it is, is this in fact there's too many of them. Um, too many retroactions. We're going to try and, I think, maybe just do a, a smaller number. Okay, so you want to take them down and what number are you trying to aim at? Okay, well the next, uh, over, the, over the flip side. So, yep. next question on that side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did you plan as, as your last step? Okay, well we wanted to reduce the action list from uh, 12 items down to 4 items. To so 4 items, I see. And so you expected to get it down to 4, is yep. that correct? Yep. And what actually happened was, in this case, it, you still had much more than 4. Uh, yes, so the, the actual thing that happened where we were able to, com well, I, I expected we were able to complete at least two of them and complete some progress on the others. I see. And what actually, hap what actually happened um, in, in this uh, cycle? Uh, we still didn't complete any of them. Right. What did you learn from your attempt? Um, we still can't work on multiple things at once. <laughs> I think that's very wise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Back to the other side of the card. Okay. So, what is your next step from this point? Understanding that you have difficulty in uh, taking on so many items in a single cycle. Uh, well, we're now planned just to do one action item. One action item. Yes. Uh, this this case is uh, QA must review our um, must review our acceptance criteria before we take things into the sprint. So, with this focus on, on that one item, what do you expect to happen? I expect that we will be able to complete one action item next sprint. I think we can be optimistic about that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, fifth question, how quickly can we go and see what we've learned from taking this step, from, from pairing down from a, a large number of items to a relatively small number? Um, I hope to see that at the end of the sprint, at the end of the month, the, uh, the 30th of the month. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Nice. Good session. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I hope this was a, a practical demonstration of the coaching carta that goes hand in hand with the improvement carta. I was thinking of ways that I've tried to put this onto slides, it just doesn't translate. And it's a much better observation from actually a, a reenactment of the process because it's the thinking and it's the, the conversation that makes this happen. If we, if we try and come up with a, a, a slides or a, a process, the thinking behind the questions uh, helps us to understand the problem in more detail and help us to work towards a solution. Thank, thank you, uh, Alex and my, my assistants. Does anyone have any questions at this stage before I go back to a few slides? Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll move back to some slides. Thank you to my, my wonderful assistants. So, okay. So, uh, why is this useful? Why is this a, a useful technique? We've all uh, had great, great plans, great strategic plans, and we know we can plot out our journey uh, and the milestones to get there. Uh, but we all know that uh, reality is not like that. Uh, reality is just full of, ob of obstacles. And I love this technique because it teaches us to tackle them one at a time. And to focus on just solving the initial problem. Um, and to, I guess, try and uh, understand the detail about that problem and take it one step at a time. The reality isn't even like this. The reality is you can't even see what's coming up. So you can't even plan those actions, and even once you've learned those actions, next time it could be different. The, the obstacle or the challenge the next step along the way could be different. So we have to be continuously adapting, continuously learning, even when we're hit with obstacles. Okay, now the secret to making this work, which I wasn't able to demonstrate, the Toyota Carter would recommend a second coach who coaches the coach, because that is another skill which is hard to learn. It gives us the template, the five questions that we can help to prompt the, the learner, the person who's standing at the board. It gives us a pattern to teach them and ask the right questions. But you heard there was other questions being asked that weren't written down. So 
there's a need to coach the coach to ask more open-ended questions. Oh, why was that a challenge for you? Oh, why is this an issue? Why is this important? What else could you do? What else? Is there something else that we can think of that would help us to overcome that obstacle? It's not always the first thing that we think of. So there's also a coaching carter where the second coach, not necessarily again the manager, it could be another peer, coaching the coach in his process. Okay. This is how it works at scale. Your organization level can have a target, a mission statement for the organization, the company. That can have uh, an experimentation towards, towards completing that target. And it feeds down so that the departments or the group level, their target condition becomes the direction for the process underneath that, the actual engineers, the, the hands-on people doing the actual work. So the target condition for one level of the organization becomes the group direction for the next level down. Now the hard, the, uh, the hard thing, uh, but the, the way that this works and the way Toyota have refined this is by having these coaches coaching each other, both up and down the organization, to make this work. Coaches coaching each other at each level of the organization. <coughs> Hands up if you've been to the Toyota plant at Altona. Fantastic, hey, fantastic, okay, so. I, I observed a lot of quality control at the Toyota plant. Every step, every process, quality checks, quality checks, all the way through. It's not just checking the, ve the vehicle as it rolls off the production line. There are quality checks all the way down. Now, I, was looking, I wasn't looking at the robots and the machinery at the plant. As I was on the tour of the factory, I was observing the boards behind, the Kanban boards, the, uh, the stats, the metrics, Everywhere you went, there were boards with data and metrics. Now, we didn't see this, this uh, continuous learning, this Toyota Carter, because it's been something that Toyota have done for decades. They know this. They just do this. They do Kaizen practices. They just do this all of the time. They no longer need this process. They've evolved beyond it. They've got the thinking in all of the leaders top down in the organization. All you see at the end is the impact and the result of all of that a, a high-quality product, refined and optimized, every process highly tuned. Okay. There's always a better way, and we need to keep refining what that better way is. I'd like to, to stop for a moment and see if there are any questions. I've got a few more slides just to summarize at the end with a, uh, a key learning that I've had from implementing this process. But are there any, are there any questions so far? Thank you. Alex. In, in, your, uh, in your personal life, have you, have you started perhaps even applying Kanban methods? Good, good question. Yes, I've, I've got a, a few slides that I can run through of a practical example of uh, an outcome we have achieved. I, I can share that with, with you in a moment. Are there any other questions? Yes. Good. So the, quest the question was about how IT organizations in particular can apply these techniques that have been in manufacturing, is that right? Yes. A lot of IT organizations have had, um, I guess, some immunity over, over change. The, the car manufacturing or, the, manu or the, uh, the, the manufacturing industry as a whole has had decades worth of uh, learning and experience to know how important it is to optimize and find better ways of reducing costs and getting more efficiency, cutting out waste. And all of the Toyota practices are optimized to reduce waste and to get quality. Not, they're not focusing perhaps on the customer and the outcome, but they're focusing on quality. And as a side effect of that, we're able to deliver things fast because they're of high quality. There's very little waste, very little rework. In the IT organizations, we flourish on the opposite. We have bugs, we have issues, we have incidents. We do not flourish on quality and the cycle of processes that the, in, the uh, manufacturing industry have had for decades. They're starting to change. We're starting to learn a lot from the, the manufacturing industry 
and, and the DevOps, pro, DevOps is one of those, uh, I guess, techniques, processes, cultures that are learning to apply this into IT operations. So it, yes, it certainly is a line that we still have a lot to learn from manufacturing um, and how we can make things better. Did that answer, answer the question? Excellent, thank you. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll forward on a few more slides and then I'll, I'll summarize up with a, a closing uh, learning, a key learning that I've had and see if there's any further questions at the end. This is my office, or this, this was my office until uh, two days ago, and we had on a board a set of uh, objectives or a mission statement. I'll highlight one of those for you. It says, give people what they need, or give people the information they need to make the right decision. Well, what does that mean? What, what information? What people? What decisions are they making? So I had three workshops. I paired up with one of my peers and we came up with uh, some statements, a target condition, well, understanding what our current condition was first, then what is our next target condition, and then what was going to be the first steps towards that. This is, this is my desk. This is my little board. I didn't have a big, didn't have a big paper version then. But this is, this is my first attempt at my, my improvement carter. So I then sat down with my direct reports. These are two members of my team. And I said to them, this is my, my goal is to be able to uh, have some visibility on how many things are getting blocked, how many things are getting stuck. I need visibility on this to make decisions about whether I need more resources or whether I need to extend the schedule. So I said that was my challenge and to my direct reports. So they had to figure out ways to <laughs> expose and make some more stuff visible about their unplanned work. This is their card. These are the steps that they went through to try and implement some change to figure out how we can expose this data from our, our um, management, work item management system. This is me with my peers. These are not my managers. These are other team leads at my peer level. And we're talking about you know, the process. I'm getting coaching from them about the process that I'm following. Three days later, we were actually able to cycle through this pretty quickly. Three days later, I've now got cards turning red if they get stuck in a particular state for 15 days. Now that's obviously not a very good uh, idea, but we, at least we can now highlight and get visibility. Now, this would have taken me about three minutes because I'm, I'm an admin of the system and I know how to set those queries up and how to filter those items so that they would turn red. But I wanted my team members to learn how to do this so that if they needed to change, if they needed to tweak, if they wanted to uh, perhaps do something slightly different, differently, they already had some exposure, had to administrate the system, and they no longer were dependent upon me. So it took me a while to, to overcome my, uh, my control, I guess, and to allow my team members uh, to delegate access to a, a system to actually experiment and learn for themselves. That was easy, they thought. All right, you bastards, try this one. <laughs> This is, our, this is our project, this is our line projecting when we're going to finish. And at the moment, I've got a Monte Carlo simulation, simulating a wide cone of uncertainty here. You're going to finish your project sometime between August and November. That's not good enough. Give me the information that I need to make the decisions. Do I hire more staff? Do I defer the schedule? Get me that cone narrow. I don't care whether it goes fast, if it goes slow, but I want a narrow cone. I want to get the certainty. I don't care if it's going to be November, I just want the certainty so that I can make a decision, do I have to hire more staff? There's a kernel of uncertainty, that's your challenge. And that was the second, the second cycle and our second target condition that I de delegated to my team. So, there are some challenges here. The first one was actually letting go and actually you know, allowing my team members the authority to experiment and try things out. Knowing that this was something that I could probably do fairly quickly, um, knowing that I've got more experience. Uh, the, two, the two people you saw in the photo at the beginning, they were students. They're IBL placements that I have within my team. But I gave them the permission to try and learn and uh, experiment. That's hard. It's hard to, to give up that authority. The second thing that was hard was the coaching cycle. So thank you to Alex for being my, my pair. The hard part here was a, a coaching cycle to provide open-ended questions. 
Now, I haven't demonstrated the first two parts of the setting the goal or an understanding your current condition. I just focused on the, the kind of improvement uh, cycle. But there's other workshops you would do to establish those, those first, uh, the first steps. And it's, it's hard to ask open-ended questions without trying to encourage people to a certain solution. I know, I know this is how I would solve the problem, but I have to ask lots of open questions to understand how they are thinking. And this is where a second coach definitely helps coach you in how to ask the right questions and not to keep asking leading questions because they're likely to say yes and agree with me because I'm their manager. Uh, I, need a, I need another coach to help coach me in asking some open-ended questions and changing the wording, changing perhaps some of my body language so they actually feel safer in recognizing no, that they can make up their own mind. Um, I actually offered my team in, in the first experiment um, I can show you how to admin that system to make those tickets turn red. Uh, just book a time in my calendar and I'll show you how to do that. They decided not to, that they would Google the answer. And I knew that was going to take longer, but I allowed them to do that because they could learn for themselves. And maybe they would have found a different solution. And maybe my idea wasn't actually as good as I, as I thought it was. So the hard part here was actually allowing, allowing them to experiment and uh, allowing them to provide some open-ended questions. The coaching is key, uh, not to try and control um, the outcomes. Okay. It's also hard to spend perhaps a little bit of time on that uh, improvement Carta board. Uh, a lot of development teams, engineering teams, that have a daily stand-up, about 15 minutes. Well, now I'm introducing another daily stand-up of another 15 minutes to go through this continuous improvement board. Uh, it's hard sometimes to get time to do that, uh, but certainly the, the, the practice and the patience pays off. We're able to make some improvements, and certainly um, you, heard, you heard my, my little uh, walkthrough uh, role play here. Without allocating time to improve stuff, you never improve. There's always something that seems to be more important. So uh, summary, uh, this is why it's important. It works really well when you've got a lot of unknown, and you can't figure out all of the steps. You just plan one target, one step at a time, and you work through the obstacles to get to your outcome. You just can't plan every step, every milestone. It just never works out that way. It does, it does work at scale. I've only been able to get perhaps from the, perhaps from the middle level down um, because I'm a team lead and I have uh, members of my team that I can coach into this process. If you'd like more information, I've tried to summarize a book in about 20 minutes. If you'd like more detail about the process, how to apply this and how it might fit in with your, your projects and your work, Mike Rother uh, book. It does not talk about IT specific. It has come from the Toyota industry. There is a lot of um, manufacturing, a lot of, I, uh, I guess you, you can tell from the slides that he's produced, He's not a marketing guy. He's a hands-on engineer who's figured out this, this practice from observing Toyota for decades. It does say here, manage, managing people, managing is not the right word. You'll read the book, it's all about coaching. But even though it says managing people on the title, um, it's all about coaching. The surprising outcome that I learned, my big aha, my big surprise, was the impact it had on employee engagement. Anyone read Dan Pink? Dan Pink, drive. Wonderful, excellent. Okay, uh, Dan Pink recommends there are three, three key factors that actually achieve success. Um, first of all, purpose. Everyone must have a sense of purpose that the thing that they are doing is contributing to the greater good of the company or the organization or the customer. And by having this chain that my, my improvement my improvement process and my next step is contributing up to the high levels, I get a sense of purpose. I also get a sense of mastery. I'm getting better and better at what I'm doing because I'm practicing this carter every day, getting smaller and smaller improvements, that I am getting better and mastering the skill of continuous improvement, continuous learning. The third one is autonomy. I'm actually feel uh, more engaged because my managers give me the autonomy to make my own decisions and to find out my own solutions. So the fact that we were able to implement this continuous learning, continuous improvement carta led to higher employee engagement because they had purpose, 
mastery and autonomy. That was my best uh, outcome, my best learning from that process, and I'd encourage you all to uh, look up the Dan Pink if you haven't already read that book. Uh, thank you, that concludes my presentation, and if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them in a moment. Thank you. Are there any further questions? As a controlled person, how do you let go? Great question. Uh, the five questions try and steer you as an initial focus. They, they provide you the questions that are open-ended so they're not telling someone. They're asking questions for the, 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 the team members who are doing the process improvement. Um, the second coach will certainly help if you can get one. Initially, it was a peer. It was not my manager, but it was a peer um, who was able to coach me and how I, how I was uh, asking the questions, the tone of my voice, if it was a leading question, that they were, yeah, it's hard. Um, but the, the five questions will certainly set you on the right, the right steps. Um, Mike Roth, I recommend you practice this to the letter for the first maybe three months, six months, until you get into the, the thinking that you're now more relaxed, so you've learned how to ask the right questions, you've learned how to, to, to bite your tongue. It, it was hard for me not to jump in and tell my team, no, don't go to Google, don't try and research this out, you're going to spend three or four hours when I know the answer, and it would take me three minutes. You had to bite, bite my tongue, but the outcome was that they learned. They now learned how to solve the problem. Maybe, I, maybe there's another problem that comes up. They know how to Google for the answer and be able to implement this, and it may be something that I actually don't know. So yeah, it's, it's hard to... To, to withhold your leadership and to encourage others. Good question. Any others? So, you're an organisation where currently this isn't happening and you want to bring in this process. How do you go about getting coached yourself so you can then become the coach to drive forward this initiative? Really good question. <laughs> my, my recommendation would be to try and find other peers who are also at a similar, similar, similar thinking. Other peers in a DevOps, if you have other DevOps counterparts, other people who are passionate and keen to make progress, to make change, um, try and encourage them to read the book. I, I was shown this book by, by, by one of my colleagues who then coached me um, in one of the workshops to get the, the first current condition and, and target step. Um, but the, yeah, the Toyota Way, I didn't find that book by myself. It was recommended to me by a colleague. Um, yeah, find find someone and act as a peer, and at least if you're if you are a leader, work on it with your direct reports. Yes, it's going to be hard without the the full um, sense of purpose. How does this fit in with a higher organisation up to the higher goal? Uh, try and find a colleague who believes the same things. Recommend they read the book as well. well read the book. Yeah. Ask your a colleague to read, read the book. It's on. Um, uh, um, Amazon Kindle, you can get an e-version an e of it, which is much cheaper, right? Um, but yeah, try and, try and find some colleagues to help you on that journey. So what you're saying is that it's more by, it's more by bottom-up approach of things. Can be, well it can apply to the top, top down as well. Certainly, um, the goals at the top level are much bigger, much broader. They might have a goal where they would meet up uh, maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter, but maybe once a month. How, is, how have we made progress towards uh, intro, incrementing towards continuous delivery? How have we made progress towards getting our, our TDD code coverage up to the level that we have planned? So the organizational level or the group level goals might be longer, um, but certainly we can apply or, or make some assumptions as to what their goals would be and make some assumptions as to what their steps are from the information that my managers tell me. Um, yes, even when they haven't followed the, the actual process themselves. Coaching, though, is, is critical to getting the understanding correct. Um, I'm, I may be going off on a, on, a, on a wild goose chase trying to explore something and I'll be, I'm actually miss the point that uh, is actually going to achieve me the results. My, my manager isn't coaching me uh, in giving me the right, the right direction. Um, yeah, it's, it's not easy, but yeah, my, my experience has been bottom up because we can still implement this um, and get value from it. Good question. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.